Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be doing some filler and primer work on my Mercedes, the quarter pan on the area specifically. I have previously welded up the hole, which was intended for the antenna. And I'm also doing some filler and primer work on the quarter panel. This area right here in the bottom is damaged. So I'm just now addressing that. So to kind of show you what I've done with the white body, I have pretty much ended up cutting out a lot of the metal, which you guys have seen in a previous uh, video about this car. But I have now just finally welded everything up and sealed everything so that way nothing rusts. I did that on this side and on the other side as well. And as far as the front, I didn't let to do a whole lot of stuff, just a little rust repair. You can kind of see that in the hole right there. The camera will focus, but... I've also sealed up the uh, fender so that doesn't rust. And right now I'm just styling in the fitment to make sure the fitment's perfect. But the damage that I was talking about, it's this right here. It's kind of weird because there was no like filler on this, but the metal was already warped and the paint itself started to like wrinkle in a weird way, which I guess it has some like surface rust, so I'll be uh, hammering this with my hammer and dolly set that I have right here. Okay, open it. I'm not retarded. There we go. There's my hammer and dolly set specifically for like body work. I went to school for collision repair, so I have a lot of the uh, equipment for this. So I'm gonna make sure this panel is as straight as possible before I apply filler. And I'm gonna make sure there's no surface rust on this as well. And besides that area, I'll be doing filler work on this spot here. And there is a little bit of rust from that area on the inside as well that I'll be addressing and uh, taking care of and sealing up as well. And the thing is, is I was originally going to do my trunk as well because there's a damage right here. And there's a few dents on the back of the trunk as well. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of tempted to just find a new trunk, doesn't matter what color it is, and just replace it, because I'll be wrapping the car anyways. But here, let me show you a little better of the uh, coral panel area. Of course, it's not perfect, and I knew that. And uh, I used a flux core welder and not a MIG or a TIG, which would have been more ideal. But that's all I have to work with at the moment, so not too bad, honestly. And I have some ideas as far as like what color I'll be doing of the wrap and like what livery design. I'm gonna try to keep it super simple, nothing too complicated because I do have these uh, pictures of the DTM Mercedes and a lot of these wraps are like overly complicated and I'm not a huge fan of that. So I'll be doing something uh, very simple. Like I said before, less is more. You don't wanna overcomplicate things. And make it like scream at you, like, hey, look at me, you know. I want it to be super subtle, but at the same time, very aggressive. Uh, but as of now, I'm gonna put the camera onto the side, play some music, and start taking care of this quarter panel without me talking in the background, pretty much. And uh, once I finish all of that, I'll do a little like update video about like what's gonna happen with the car, as far as liveries, color, and so on. So you guys have just seen me uh, hammer and dolly this panel right here that was dented in. It's almost perfect. There's like two little high spots that I can't quite get, which honestly I might just like grind it down with an angle, angle grinder, which that'll do the trick and I'll just put filler and primer over it to make sure it's all perfect. Uh, up next, I'm gonna be working on this area right here, which is all crinkled and uneven compared to the other side. I'm gonna do, like I said, as much as possible with the hammer and dolly. Once I finish that off, I'm gonna grind everything down, sand it all off, and prep it for filler. So when I went on the other side, I've noticed that the panel on the other side is absolutely perfect, the lines are crisp, but on this side, there's a lot of high spots, like right here, and a lot of low sides, low spots, right here as well. So I have to kind of like bend the metal the way I want it to bend as close as possible. 
but inspecting this, I honestly have no idea what could have caused this. I do see some like little pitting and spots of the rust where it starts to uh, eat the metal away, but I don't see any like signs of like repair of the car. But at the same time, I believe like a few years ago, I've noticed this, how like the white isn't perfect. There's like a little like transition from this side to this side. Like somebody like spray painted this in their backyard. Pretty much did a half ass job. So, and now I gotta deal with it and fix it. That's the thing with body work. Like if you have no idea what you're doing, don't touch it or pay somebody else who actually does this professionally so they can do a proper job because a lot of times you're gonna cause a lot of pain for the next person who's gonna own your car. And a lot of times if the panel is like shiny, you can kind of see the imperfections and the little hills and whatnot and divots and pits. But if you can't see that well, your fingers are your best, you know, eyes pretty much, kind of like a raccoon in a way. So you can like really feel the imperfections and sometimes it helps to close your eyes or a little trick that I was taught is take a paper towel or like a napkin and put it on your hand. It usually helps with a bare hand with no gloves, but I'm using gloves just because I don't want to get dirty. But you put the napkin down and you close your eyes and you kind of like rub it back and forth with your full palm or preferably this area right here. Not just a finger like this. You're not gonna really get too much info from just doing this. Usually like this is how you wanna do it to really figure out the structure of the car. So, yeah. But I'm feeling the panel now and it's a trillion times better, especially this area right here because this was all kinked in. All right, so after some sanding and prep work, uh, this panel's pretty much done for filler. All I gotta do is just wipe it down now and clean it. We'll apply some filler right there. And same thing for this one. I did feather it out quite a bit. At the end, I will have to go over some more once I put the filler on, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I'll be doing this a little later. I'll be focused about, I'll be focused with this one at the moment. And I also did have to sand those areas quite a bit as well. Some over there, right there, and there's a bunch of rust right there, surface rust. But the only thing with that side right there and the, and the inside is it's really difficult to get to, so I'll be having some fun with that one. Uh, but as far as doing this one, my girlfriend will be doing this one, not me. So she wants to learn a little bit of body work, so I'm gonna have her try this one. If she messes up, she can always sand it off and try again, so it's not a big deal. But this one's a little bit more complicated, which I'll be doing myself. And I also have to put on some filler right here, just a tiny bit, where I repaired the uh, dent that was dented in. Not really noticeable anymore, honestly. I could probably get away with no filler, but I'm gonna put a light little glaze on top, just in case. So now it's time for the repair. Um, first off, I'll be doing this panel instead of that one. And pretty much the main area I'll be focused on is here to here, and I have to like make like a little bridge right here where it curves to match the other side. So now once we get our filler and hardener, we wanna make sure we need it and uh, spread it out. You wanna make sure you do it this way to remove any air bubbles in the filler. So what we wanna do first is grab some and do like a tight skim coat. Uh, not too tight though, but tight enough. I know it's all right if you go in the paint at the moment, only because we'll be sanding this part anyways. All right, so once the filler is cured, you can grab your uh, block and start sanding. I'm using a 220 grit. You could go a little lower um, if you wanna be a little more aggressive and quicker. In my case, I can take my time and just use 220 and uh, work in this motion, never in circles. And always wear a respirator. We'll 
closer you get to the finished result, the more careful you have to be because I'd much rather check it several times. Do like a few passes, check it. A few passes, check it. Then me going overboard and then sanding too much because I can't take this and fucking smack it on here again, you know? I gotta put more filler on, which takes more time, so. Sand once, check seven times, I guess. I think that's how it goes, at least. So, we got everything masked off, which masking is usually the worst part of doing body work. I absolutely hated doing that part. And these are the areas that I'll be priming. So, as you can see, everything is dried. The primer is looking pretty nice. The repair was successful because the panel feels almost perfect. All I have to do now is just wet sand the primer. And I'm pretty much done on the outside, so I can go ahead and put the taillights back together, the bumper, and my uh, white body kit. But then what I've left is just prepping this for paint. That right there, and the uh, spot over there as well. And once I do that, the car's gonna be back together. And on the next segment, I will be talking about the updates as far as delivery and everything else I'll be planning on with the car in the future. Okay, so now it's time to block the panel. I'll be using a 220 grip because that's what the uh, primer recommends. Obviously, wet sand, so I'm gonna use soapy water. Uh, usually what helps is soaking the sandpaper overnight and that will really help it absorb a lot of the water. And the same principles apply with wet sanding as you would use with dry sanding, like we did with filler earlier. So pretty much the same thing. Uh, pretty much the goal of wet sanding is to really like refine the finish, make sure it's really smooth because this is like a build up filler or whatever you want to call it. And uh, you want to make sure these edges are also feathered out and really smooth. So that way whenever you spray paint the panel, it's got a super nice and smooth transition so you're not going to see any ripples on the light. That's really important in body work. In this case, since I'll be wrapping the car, it's not that important, but I'll still make sure this is done properly pretty much. Uh, another thing that would help is obviously putting down either dry or wet guy coat, preferably dry guy coat because it'll fill in all the little pinholes so you can see them better. But wet dry coat, guy coat will just paint over the area instead of filling it in. Both of them work, but I don't have neither, so I'm just doing it by feel. And you don't always have to use a block, you can do it with a hand, but you gotta make sure the hand is super straight and you're not using like your fingertip to press down in certain areas more than others because that will create like a line that you're sanding instead of doing it evenly pretty much. And the benefit of doing it this way is like you can hug the panel a little better. I mean, you can take the block and like, kind of like bend it to how you want it to be which this one is a little bent for me using it, kind of. But I'll be doing it this way now. And it'll help me to get in these edges right here so that they're smooth as well. And as you can see, I did accidentally sand through right here, which in my case, I will have to go over and prime this little area again, which it's not the end of the world, but it is what it is. So I think as far as wet sanding it, I'm probably gonna stop because this feels really good. And we pretty much have to do the whole process over there and over there as well. So once I finish all those areas, I'm gonna reprime that one little tiny spot, sand it down some, and I'll be all good to go.